Step back into the groovy 70s with a sitcom that redefined the term roommate troubles. Three's Company, a classic television series from 1976, follows the hilarious escapades of Jack, Janet, and Chrissy as they navigate misunderstandings, awkward situations, and plenty of laughs. What makes this show truly special? Well, get ready for a roller coaster of emotions because there are funny, shocking, and even sad facts about the series that you won't see coming. So keep those eyes glued to the screen. Now, have you ever been personally touched by the wit and charm of Three's Company? Share your stories in the comments below. How has this sitcom impacted your life? Or perhaps, what enduring qualities do you think make it a timeless symbol of the industry? As you reminisce about your most cherished memories or personal experiences related to this classic sitcom, remember that we'd love to hear your tales and reflections in the comments below. Your stories are what keep the spirit of Three's Company alive. Get ready for a journey filled with laughter and nostalgia. Funny, shocking, and sad facts await, so keep watching and share your thoughts with us. Your stories matter. Three's Company, the 1976 sitcom, wasn't just a show, it became a cultural phenomenon. The 1976 sitcom, Three's Company, was not just a TV show, it turned into a cultural sensation. During its time, the series received widespread acclaim for its unique blend of humor and relatability, drawing viewers into the hilarious misadventures of the characters. The show struck a chord with audiences, reflecting societal changes and shifting norms of the era. The groovy 70s backdrop, combined with clever writing and stellar performances, turned it into a must-watch for a diverse audience. The show's influence extended beyond its original airings, giving rise to spin-offs that continued to laughter with new storylines and characters. These spin-offs captured the essence of the original series, carrying forward its humor and charm. The enduring popularity of these spin-offs is a testament to the lasting appeal of the Three's Company universe. Merchandise associated with the show flooded the market, allowing fans to bring a piece of it into their daily lives. From t-shirts to posters, the imagery from the series became a staple in popular culture. The merchandise not only showcased the show's popularity, but also solidified its status as a cultural touchstone. Adaptations of Three's Company further cemented its impact. The show's premise and comedic dynamics inspired various reimaginings, proving that the formula of mismatched roommates navigating comedic situations had a timeless quality. These adaptations ensured that the spirit of Three's Company lived on, influencing subsequent generations of sitcoms. In conclusion, Three's Company transcended its status as a sitcom to become a cultural touchstone. Its influence on popular culture is evident in the spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations that follow with its initial success. The laughter, camaraderie, and relatable situations continue to connect with audiences, making Three's Company a timeless symbol of the entertainment industry. In the world of Three's Company, Chrissy's background brought a unique layer to the storyline. Her father, a Methodist minister, added a touch of religious influence to her character, creating an interesting dynamic within the trio's living arrangements. During the initial seasons, the beach scenes in the opening and closing credits were a result of a last-minute decision by producers at Venice Beach. Notably, the shot of Jack Tripper on his bike was captured by negotiating with a Venice shop owner who allowed with the crew to use his roof for a fee of 100. The exterior shots of the Roper's apartment, a corner dwelling in Santa Monica, added authenticity to the series. The owners granted permission for the filming, allowing the show to integrate real locations into its portrayal of the characters' lives. As the series progressed, these elements, from Chrissy's religious background to the impromptu beach shots and real apartment settings, added charm to Three's company. The show's ability to blend realism with humor became a hallmark, resonating with audiences far beyond its original airings. In a nod to its lasting popularity, spin-offs continued the laughter with fresh storylines and characters. The influence extended into merchandise, turning memorable scenes into cultural staples. Adaptations of the series showcased its timeless appeal, ensuring that the spirit of mismatched roommates navigating comedic situations lived on. In conclusion, Three's Company, with its relatable dynamics and humorous misadventures, went beyond the sitcom world to become a cultural touchstone. Its influence is evident in the continued popularity of spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations that follow with its initial success. The show's ability to seamlessly integrate real elements into a comedic narrative has left a lasting impression on the entertainment landscape.
in the unfolding of the 1976 sitcom, Three's Company, subtle nods, and behind-the-scenes quirks added layers to the viewer experience. At the close of the second episode in the first season, Jack delivered a sly reference to his previous role on The Waltons, playfully saying, Good night, John Boy. This wink to his past endeared fans to the actor's talents. Interestingly, the age dynamics among the main cast members held surprises. John portrayed a young man in his early 20s, yet Richard, who was 32 at the series' onset in 1976, played a similar character. By the time Three's A Crowd concluded in 1985, he had surpassed 40. In contrast, Jack, who was 28 when the series began, aged to 37 when the spin-off wrapped up. These age gaps added an extra layer to the portrayal of youthful camaraderie on screen. Amidst the laughs, Audra Lindley's transformation for the role of Helen Roper was another subtle twist. Despite her naturally blonde straight hair, she donned a red curly wig, embodying the character with a unique flair. This seemingly minor detail showcased the actors' commitment to their roles, contributing to the authenticity that fans appreciated. In the production, the show's commitment to realism extended to its filming locations. The beach scenes, a crucial part of the opening and closing credits, resulted from a spontaneous decision at Venice Beach. Negotiating with a local shop owner for a rooftop shot of Jack on his bike added an element of authenticity for a mere 100. Furthermore, the exterior shots of the Roper's apartment were filmed in a corner dwelling in Santa Monica, enriching the series with genuine locales. This integration of real elements into the comedic narrative became a hallmark of the show, resonating with audiences and elevating it beyond typical sitcom conventions. In the grand scheme, these fresh insights into the show's nuances, whether it be playful nods to actors' past, age dynamics among the cast, or the commitment to authentic settings underscore the appeal that made it a timeless gem in television history. After a 30-year hiatus, former sitcom cast members Joyce Dewitt and Suzanne Summers reconnected for a YouTube event hosted by Cafe Mom. In their candid discussion, they shed light on the aftermath of Summers' dismissal, blaming much of the tension on what they perceived as sexism from Mickey Ross and other producers. Dewitt straightforwardly mentioned they couldn't appreciate the feminine contribution while Summers labeled them as pigs. In subsequent interviews, both Dewitt and Priscilla Barnes referred to the show's producers as abusive, with Barnes describing her time working with TTC Productions as one of the worst experiences of my life. Don Knotts, known for his comedy, took on a new challenge with Three's Company, marking his first venture into live sitcoms. This departure from his previous roles added a fresh dimension to the show, showcasing Knotts' versatility in television comedy. Throughout its seasons, the show presented viewers with three different addresses for the central apartment, creating a subtle yet noteworthy inconsistency. This dynamic shift in location subtly played into the evolving narrative, adding a layer of unpredictability for the audience. Behind-the-scenes quirks continued with subtle nods and surprises. In the first season, Jack Tripper delivered a clever reference to his past role on The Waltons, injecting a playful note into the script. The age dynamics among the main cast members also brought unexpected twists, with John portraying a character in his early 20s despite being 32 at the series' inception in 1976. Richard, starting at 32, surpassed 40 by the time the spin-off concluded in 1985. In contrast, Jack, aged 28 at the show's beginning, reached 37 by the spin-off's end, offering a unique perspective on the portrayal of youthful camaraderie on screen. The commitment to realism extended to Audra Lindley's transformation for the role of Helen Roper. Despite her natural blonde straight hair, she embraced a red curly wig, adding a distinctive flair to her character. This seemingly minor detail underscored the actor's dedication and contributed to the authenticity that resonated with fans. In conclusion, the revelations surrounding the cast dynamics and production choices offer fresh insights into the show's multifaceted nature. The behind-the-scenes intricacies, combined with the evolving on-screen elements, contribute to its timeless appeal in television history, showcasing a blend of humor and authenticity that continues to captivate audiences.